In today's lesson, we will learn about subject-verb agreement. You already know that a singular subject takes a singular verb, and a plural subject takes on a plural verb. As a reminder, a singular noun names one person, place, or thing. And when we turn a singular noun into a plural noun, we generally add an S or an ES. On the contrary, a singular verb takes on an S while the plural verb does not. Let's go on to examples of subject-verb agreement. Let's take the simple subject. For the most part, subject-verb agreement is fairly straightforward when it comes to simple subjects. The dog barks. The dogs bark. Notice the singular noun dog takes on the singular verb barks. And the plural noun dogs takes on the plural verb bark. Let's go on to compound subjects. Compound subjects are also straightforward. When the nouns are joined by the word and, you will use a plural verb. For example, a pencil and a pen are on the table. Pencils and pens are on the table. In these examples, the subject verb agreement is also straightforward. But sometimes, subject-verb agreement is a little tricky, and it's not as straightforward as the examples we have seen here, so there are a few rules that you must follow. Let's start with collective nouns. Collective nouns are singular or plural depending on their context. When the members of a collective noun act as a unit, you will use a singular verb. For example, the jury deliberates carefully and conscientiously. The school board meets next Wednesday to discuss class size. In both examples, the jury and the school board act as one singular unit. But when the members of a collective noun act as individuals, you will use a plural verb. For example, the jury were shocked, amused, and annoyed by the scandalous testimony. The school board were divided on their views about class size. In these two examples, you can see that the jury and the school board were not acting as a unit, but rather individually. Let's go on to the conjunctions OR and NOR. The conjunctions OR and NOR use a singular verb. For example, we can say either Larry or Martha is available to take you or neither Larry nor Martha is available to take you. But if a sentence has a compound subject joined by or or nor, and any element of the subject is plural, the verb will be plural. For example, neither the park ranger nor the campers see the bear. In this example, we have the compound subject joined by the conjunction nor, and we see that one of the nouns is plural, campers, so we will use a plural verb, see, not sees. Let's go on to indefinite pronouns. Some indefinite pronouns are singular. Let's look at these examples. Either of the girls is available to babysit tonight. Each has her own car. And some indefinite pronouns are plural. Both are prompt and reliable. Few are as trustworthy as they are. Let's go on to singular nouns that end in S. For these singular nouns, you will use a plural verb because although they are singular, they represent a pair consisting of two equal joined parts. Some of these examples are scissors, trousers, pajamas, and glasses. They take a plural verb. The scissors are on the table. My pajamas are in the hamper. There are other singular nouns that end in S that take on a singular verb. And this is because they are considered uncountable. For example, news, linguistics, physics, measles, diabetes, mumps, cards. Linguistics is the study of language and structure. Measles is a communicable disease. 
Let's go on to the pronoun none. The pronoun none will take a singular verb when referring to a singular noun or pronoun, but will take a plural verb when referring to a plural noun. Let's look at these examples. None of the pizza was eaten. In this sentence, the context tells us that there is only one pizza and that no part of the pizza was eaten. So in this case, we use the singular verb was. But what if there are several pizzas and not any of the pizzas were eaten? In this case, none takes the plural verb. None of the pizzas were eaten. So remember that context plays a big part in whether you will use a singular or a plural verb. Let's go on to sentences that begin with here and there. These types of sentences are said to be inverted. So here and there are never the subject. Let's look at these examples. There are plenty of fish in the sea. There is a call for you on line one. Here is the cab we ordered. Here are the letters you were looking for. In all of these examples, these sentences are inverted. And the last tricky subject verb agreement is phrase interruption. Be careful when the subject is separated from the verb by a phrase, like in this example. When any of your students has or have questions, you should answer them clearly. Think about the answer. The subject here is any, an indefinite pronoun, and it is separated from the verb by the prepositional phrase that's functioning as an adjective of your students. We know that any is a singular indefinite pronoun, so the verb is has. So the sentence would say, when any of your students has questions, you should answer them clearly. Let's go on to the next one. If you think one of your dresses need or needs altering, then you must take it to the shop. What do you think the verb is, need or needs? If you said needs, you are correct, because again, we are looking at an indefinite pronoun that has been separated from the verb by a prepositional phrase of your dresses. To summarize, subject verb agreement is for the most part fairly straightforward, but can be tricky when you have compound subjects joined by nor and or, collective nouns, indefinite pronouns, singular nouns that end in s, the pronoun none, inverted sentences beginning with here and there, and sentences interrupted by phrases. Make sure you go back and review the video for the parts you did not understand and leave a comment below if you need further explanation. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'll see you real soon.